In this chapter, we will have a look on Node Editor versus Redshift Shader Graph. C4D 2023 is offering to use two different editors for Redshift, Node Editor and Redshift Shader Graph. Node Editor is created by Maxon and Shader Graph is a legacy editor created by Redshift. Most common question is which editor is better to use. There is simple answer, it doesn't matter. Both are doing the same thing, so there is no advantage on any side. Difference between them is actually just design. Plus, Node Editor doesn't support Expresso, but it has some modern auto-connecting features. So this choice is more about your workflow. If you are using Material Library or Megascans assets, which has been created for Shader Graph, there is no reason to use Node Editor. But if your workflow is using mostly C4D Material Library, use for editing their Node Editor. And now I will show you how to set up preferences for these two editors. If you would like to use primary shader graph, go to the Render, Redshift, and in General section you can find Node Materials for Presets option. If this option is unchecked, it means that your primary Redshift editor is Shader Graph. And as next step, go to the Material section, and here you can choose what is going to be your default material. In Material Manager section, choose RS Shader Graph option. And now when I will go to the Main Material section, and I will create new material, as you can see, it creates standard material for Redshift Shader Graph. In case that you would like to use C4D Node Editor instead, go back into the C4D Preferences, Renderer, Redshift, and in General section activate Node Materials option. And if I will create new material now, as you can see by default it creates standard material for C4D Node Editor. In this chapter, we will have a look on Shader Graph Optimization. In my case, I prefer to work in Shader Graph, and here is some tips how to customize Shader Graph for more effective workflow. If I will open Shader Graph, as you can see, I customize it, so I have significantly more space for Node. If I will click inside the Shader Graph on empty space, and I will use shortcut H, it will fit and align all nodes into the Shader Graph window. So with just one click, I can see now all nodes. It's very helpful, especially if I am working with large material setup. That's the reason why I am using global C4D attributes instead Shader Graph attributes. It's giving me much more space to work with nodes. But if you prefer to have material parameters inside the Shader Graph, go to the Preferences, Renderer, Redshift, and in User Interface section, you can find Global Attribute Manager option. If I will disable Global Attribute, and I will reopen Shader Graph, as you can see I have Material Attributes inside Shader Graph now. But also you can see that I have significantly less space for nodes now. Also, I am not using Node Panel section. If is Node Panel section important for you, go to the Shader Graph, View, and here you can activate or deactivate Node Panel. Also in Material Preview section, you can activate or deactivate Material Preview. But again, as you can see, I have even less space for Redshift Node now. That's the reason why I'm not using Node Panel and Material Attributes inside the Shader Graph. And here is practical example how important it is to have enough space for nodes if you are working with just one monitor. And instead Node Panel, I'm using Command Line, which you can activate with Shift C, or you can customize this shortcut as you need. It's the same workflow as I explained already in Connect Node to Output example. In the next chapter, we will have a look on how to create standard material presets and how to convert materials into the Redshift Node Editor.